All right, yesterday, Spotsylvania County Public Schools in Fredericksburg, Virginia, announced that it will remove 14 books that contain, quote, sexually explicit content and themes that are inappropriate for young persons, end quote. And those are being removed from the school district's libraries. Now, the district joins many districts nationwide making similar decisions to protect their children. This is all a part of a trend that we continue to see as parents, as parents are engaging with their children's schools. Most, a lot of this coming after they realize what their kids were actually being taught in schools as they uh, got a look into it during COVID. And what they found out, it wasn't just reading and writing and arithmetic. And to be clear, some of the books that were removed even contained sexually, sexual encounters, not just between minors, but as between adults and minors. And it's just, and they were listed in, or described rather, in graphic detail. Now, frankly, this is not just material that children should be exposed to. Frankly, there's not really any purpose behind this material to begin with. When you look at children and being sexually sexualized by adults. Well, joining me now uh, to talk about this is Spotsylvania County Public School Superintendent Mark Taylor, who made the decision to remove these books. Mark, welcome to Washington Watch. Tony, thank you very much. Good to meet you, sir. Well, well Mark, first, uh, thank you. Uh, good to have you. I, I want to express our appreciation to you on behalf of uh, concerned parents, not only there in your community, but nationwide for taking a stand and protecting children from these uh, inappropriate materials. Now, I want to ask you a question. What led you to make this decision? Um, yes, sir. The question, the decision is rooted really in new law that was passed by the Virginia General Assembly and signed by Governor Youngkin last year. And it was a major priority of Governor Youngkin's, as I understand it, to support uh, parental notification and parental uh, opt-out rights with regard to sexually explicit materials in the public schools. As it happens, um, library books are included in, at least in our division's treatment by policy of instructional materials, and a number of the books had been challenged due to their content. The, what I found was that there were books that included content that is, meets the state's definition of sexually explicit material, and therefore clearly requires parental notification and opt out. Now, with these being library books, there is no efficient or reliable mechanism to control um, who or when takes a, a student takes a book off the shelf in the library and sits and reads it during a free period. Mm -hmm. The most efficient thing for us to do as a division, therefore, is simply to remove the books. No law requires them to be in the library. They are available in the public libraries. They do not have a role in our uh, instructional program that I could discern. And so it seemed most efficient and best in the interest of parental uh, engagement and the reinforcement of parental rights simply to remove the books from our school libraries. So, Superintendent Taylor, what I hear you saying is two things. One, the law said, I, I, I got to protect kids from this. Parents have to be involved if they have it. And then secondly, you have limited resources and you're saying we really don't have a system in place. We'd have to create one for a handful of books in order to sh ensure that we're in compliance with the law. Now, there are some critics, uh, as I'm sure you're hearing from them, but they're, they're saying this is book banning. What do you say? Well, absolutely not. First of all, before this decision was made, uh, the, it was confirmed, I confirmed personally, that these titles are all available in the public library system. And that is the library system's right. That's the community's um, right. And, and that's not an issue for us at the school division. This is simply about law passed in Virginia about sexually explicit instructional materials that are made available to children mm -hmm. and young people in our schools. Uh, so it, they're not, it's not a ban. It's simply not a ban. I know we have some vocal critics, but what else are you hearing from parents since you've made this decision? 
Well, I've heard from a few parents, and 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 frankly, there is a this is budget season, and we do have limited resources, and we are engaged in a full scale uh, campaign with our local governing body to encourage funding for our school division. And so, frankly, the budget is taking a lot of our present attention. But the response that I'm aware of from some parents is very supportive of this decision. I would it's think so. Because it affirms the parental engagement and the, the, the parents' right to know and responsibility for their children. Well, it's actually refreshing to see people um, adhering to the law. Uh, especially when we see so much lawlessness today. Very quickly, uh, Mark, we're, we're on the way out here for a break, but how can our listeners and viewers be praying for you and your team? Oh, thank you. Thank you for that question, uh, Mr. Perkins. We, we are dedicated to service to this community and betterment of the school division here. We do have many challenges, and right now funding is a critical need with uh, especially with the news of concerns about revenue projections for the commonwealth of virginia funding is an acute need we need the support of this community we want to do our very best we want to maintain the best programs possible provide the best experience possible for this community's young people it really is all about the kids here well we certainly will pray to that end and i know that people appreciate you protecting the children and what they're being exposed to. Mark, thanks so much for joining us today. Tony, thank you. Thank you, sir.